Hi, my name is Oscar and I'm a scientist. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about this, a foreign degree. If you studied abroad, abroad meaning not in the United States, you should know what you have to do with your degree so you can use it in your I-140 petition. Let's jump in. Before getting into the matter, let's review very quickly what are the requirements for the EB2 NAW green card. If you want to know more about this, I have a specific video about these requirements in detail that you can check out here in the corner or I'll leave a link also in the comments below. And of course, you can go to my website and find even more information there. There are two types of requirements in this category. The first one is the general EB2 requirement that we're going to cover more in detail today because of the topic of our video. And that's the advanced degree requirement. And I'm calling it advanced degree, but it's, it's more flexible than that. It's advanced degree, which is having a master's or PhD, but it can also be substituted by having a bachelor and five years of progressive experience of having advanced in, in your career. If you don't have any bachelor, master, PhD, you can show exceptional ability and, and in the future I'll make a specific video on what is exceptional ability for those of you that are interest, interested in that route. But today we're going to talk about advanced degree as master's or PhD or even bachelor because we're going to talk about this bullet point here, foreign degrees. You have to qualify under this uh, advanced degree rule but you have a degree, your highest degree is um, from a foreign country, meaning a non-US country. So we're going to cover that in this video. That's why this particular general EB2 requirement is very important for today. Then, as we have covered many times in, in our videos, we have the three prongs of the matter of Danasar that are specific to the NIW National Interest Waiver category of green cards. And this is a category where you can self-petition. You don't need um, a job offer. You can do it from abroad. You can, you can do it from the United States. There are three prongs. We have talked about them in the past. I'm not going to cover them today. Um, go to my other videos to, to, to learn more about, about that. So you need to meet all of these requirements. Today, we're going to focus on advanced degree. So um, why are we talking about uh, evaluation of education credentials. Well, we're talking about it because you have to show the USCIS that you have an advanced degree, at least most people will go that route, and you may have a foreign degree. So this credentials evaluation is just a report, um, a report issued by an acceptable evaluation agency that establishes that um, your degree is equivalent to a U.S. degree and to which U.S. degree. Let's say that you have studied chemical engineering in Spain, which is my specific case, and you want to use your degree from Spain in your uh, I-140 application. Let's say that that's your highest degree. Then you need to go to an acceptable evaluation agency that will take your degree, review it, evaluate it, and find a US equivalent to your degree, which most likely in this example will be a master's in chemical engineering in the US system. So here on the right side, you have an example from one of these agencies. This is Wes. World Education Services is a, an agency that does this kind of uh, reports and this is a sample report that they have in their website. So the, is this a report with date, with names, with your information and then what type of um, equivalency they find, uh, they found out. In this case, this is, a, this is an example for a high school diploma um, and, and their analysis. Um, they have to list, you know, the information on, on your degree, the, the, the uh, requirements for your degree, and why they think that the US equivalent degree is XYZ. In what in instances are these credential evaluations needed? Well, 
in a lot of cases they are needed for getting accepted to an education institution in the US. Even for employment, some employers may ask to see your degree and if your degree is from abroad, then you will need one of these reports. Professional certifications or licenses, a lot of times when you try to get one of those, you will need to show your degree and if it's foreign, you will need to show the equivalency. And in our case, and that's why it's, it's bold here, for immigration processes, for example, in our EB2 and AW green card process, it is crucial that you do this if your uh, degree is foreign. Okay, and I'm always saying highest degree because at the end of the day, you will show your highest degree. Um, no need to show everything before that uh, highest degree. Let's say you have a PhD and before that you have you have masters, just show your PhD. That is your highest degree. All right, so it's always good to go to the USCIS official information. I always say that. Uh, trust the USCIS first. If you cannot find any USCIS information, look twice because usually it exists, but if, if, if you cannot find it, then go somewhere else. But let's start with USCIS information. So if you go to the policy manual, I have talked about it in my video about what, uh, the best websites for EB2 and IW applications, and I'll, I'll leave a link here in the corner. But one of the websites I showed is the policy manual, manual from USCIS, and this is a manual they use to uh, even the officers to understand how they need to grant the, the cases. So if we go to this um, volume 6, chapter 9, they specifically talk about how to evaluate your foreign degree. And here I highlighted um, officers may consider a credentials evaluation performed by an independent credentials evaluator who has provided a credible, logical and well-documented case. So, um, you see that, first of all, USCIS does not endorse a particular um, equivalency agency, credential equivalency agency. They just say that it has to be independent, and it has to be credible, logical, well-documented. Okay, so that's number one. There's no list that USCIS gives of agencies that you can use. Later in the text, they do say that they accept school officials, or in certain cases, to provide um, that kind of report. You can read it here. Um, they may accept comparable evaluation performed by a school official who has the authority to make such determinations and is acting in his or her official capacity with the educational institution. I believe that this is not very common uh, that a school official will do this type of um, documentation for you, but if you have that option, that is an option that USAS says it can be accepted. Uh, the number, the point number three that I make here is that reports should provide analysis and not only conclusions. That is also written here. The reports should provide a path, uh, a, a thought process on why they think that your degree, your foreign degree is equivalent to this type of US degree. It cannot just be a line saying your degree is equivalent to this. They have to provide the reasons why. And typically the agencies that do this already know that and will, um, will do exactly that. And finally, USCIS officials have the last words. The last word. They say here that they always, the, the, the officers always have the last consideration regardless of what the report says. You can read this uh, official information in this link that I leave here. I'll leave it also in the comments below. So where can you get uh, this type of credentials evaluation? Well, USCIS, like we just saw, they don't recommend any specific agency, but there are more popular agencies that I've seen people using. And by the way, disclaimer, I have not used any of this because my highest degree when I applied uh, was a PhD from a US institution, so I didn't need, even though I do have foreign degrees before that one, because I, you only need to use the highest degree, I use my PhD from the US, then I didn't need to go to any of, of these. However, I've seen two very popular agencies that are used by our EB2 and AW community, and those are West, West, sorry, World Education um, Services and IEE. 
international education evaluations. All right, so those are two popular ones. This is not an endorsement. As, as I just said, I, I have not used them, but they are popular and they are widely used. A way to find alternatives, if you want to compare these two with others or, or find any other option, then check out the National Association of Credential Evaluation Services, or uh, NACES. NACES has a website and you can find the members. Uh, and this is good because this association that they have, they are uh, supposed to accept only agencies that are reputable, that meet certain standards. So it's a good place to find different agencies that you could use. Let me show you the, the NACES website. It looks like this. So this is the official website and then they have a directory of members. So here you can find those two that I already talked about and many more. You can go to their website, see their prices, see their terms and conditions and decide what is best for you. This is a website for um, IEE. You can go there and, and check out their prices and what documentation you need. Again, this is their, their pricing website. They have different plans. And then you have the WES website that you can also access and take a look. And you will see that they, they already talk specifically about immigration. All right, but what do you need to get um, from these agencies? You need a general equivalency report of your highest degree. Highest degree, of course, that is relevant to the, the application. If you have a degree that is not at all relevant um, to what you are telling the USCIS that you want to do in the US, then don't bother about that one. And not necessarily a course-by-course -course report. You don't really need to get a report showing all the courses that you, you've done and how they are equivalent to courses in the US. You need a general report showing that your foreign degree is equivalent to this American degree. Cost and timeline, important, always. So the cost and timeline really depends on which agency you choose. Um, typically you can expect to pay between 80 and 110 dollars and these are the prices for the two popular agencies that I talked about earlier. They claim that um, they can give you the report in about a few days, so I would say give it allocate about two weeks uh, for this process. If possible, don't leave it for the end of your I-140 preparation because this is something that you know you, you will need. You already have your degree, so get it started as soon as you can so you already have it done. How to compare agencies? Well, cost and time, like we just saw, are important factors, but then also look at what documents they will request from you when, when they are going to do your, your report. Some of them may want originals from your diplomas and tra transcripts. Some of them may only need copies, which may be easier for you to just um, give them copies instead of sending the originals and risk them to get lost somewhere. Um, some of them may accept uh, documents in a foreign degree and they will take care of translating them. Some of them will ask you to send a professional translation of your documents, so that will really affect the, the pricing because you will have to pay a little bit more and the timing, you will have to get the translation done. And then some of them may even ask you to contact your university in the foreign country and send them the documents in a sealed envelope, so the, it, it, it adds quite a bit of complexity. So look at those things when you're trying to compare agencies so you can choose the one that fits you better. And here I'm leaving the, the two links from the, the two most popular agencies, but there are other agencies that you can check out and compare. All right, so this is it for this topic. And as usual in eb2naw.info, you can find a lot of uh, information about our favorite green card category to help you in the process of your do-it-yourself application. But also if you want to see my real successful and actionable I-140 petition, the one I submitted and got approved, then you can also download that document in my website. So I hope you liked this video and it was helpful. 
and I'll see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe and take a look at my website, ev2naw.info.